All right, guys, round two. I am sorry that I am not there with you. I am having to take care of my husband. He got his wisdom teeth cut out. So I will be back tomorrow. That is the goal. So I just wanted to make sure we are on track and on target with this project. Okay. So bell ring your question today. Um, like I said, it's all going to be review leading up to your test on Friday. So if capital A represents tall and lowercase a represents short, what percentage of the offspring will be tall? Well, if the dominant trait is tall, all you have to do is look in the Punnett square and out of the four boxes, count how many have a capital letter. And when you do, you have this box, this box, and this box. So three out of four of the boxes would have the dominant trait of tall, which would be 75%. Um, if you're looking for the amount of offspring that would be short, short is the recessive trait, so little a, and the only way to get a recessive trait is if you have two of them side by side, and only one out of four of our boxes have that, so that is 25%. All right, checklist items. We're going to talk about your Pokemon project in just a second. Um, your test is on Friday. Study guide's last page of your packet if you want to go ahead and get started looking at that stuff. No new vocabulary, and the three-minute Ed Puzzle this week is Mendel's Pea Plants. It's just a review Ed Puzzle, and it's due by Friday. Don't forget that if you're participating in clubs this Friday, you have to have all missing work in by tomorrow. So we have to have it by Wednesday, or else you cannot participate. All right, so day three, what we're doing here. Yesterday, you guys should have done your character trait chart with the phenotypes and genotypes. So I just copied and pasted one of the traits that I did in the chart yesterday. And I'm going to use this to explain today. Um, but you should have done that for four traits and gender yesterday. And then you also should have done five Punnett squares where you um, made up each parent's genotype as long as it made sense. Remember how I talked about you can't have big S, little s, but the actual parent have the recessive trait, right? So if you're giving them a dominant trait, they have to show the dominant trait. So big S, little s for this parent would represent the parent that's blue. So this guy. And then little s, little s, we said little s was yellow, so that has to represent the other parent here, okay? As long as they made sense and matched the trait of the parents, you're fine. And then I told you once you fill in the Punnett square, just circle the trait you wanted to give to your baby. And then that by the end of class, you'd have all five Punnett squares with five circled traits that you're giving your baby Pokemon. Which leads us into today. So by the end of class today, you guys need to make sure that you have drawn your new Pokemon species. Okay, so you have to follow the traits, though. If you circled, just like I did, little s, little s here, that means my baby has to have yellow skin. I could not create a Pokemon in color blue. That would not make sense. So it has to abide by what you circled in your Punnett squares. So I chose this guy right here to be the baby just because it had yellow skin and would serve its purpose for what I'm trying to explain. Um, but you can see that it's yellow, just like that parent. So you can tell it got the trait from that parent. Okay, when you draw your Pokemon, as long as you've covered the five traits, you can do whatever else to your Pokemon you want. So, like, let's say that um, for your Pokemon that you did not do, like, I don't know, eye shape as one of your traits, then you can give your Pokemon whichever eye shape you want to give it. All right, so as far as the extra traits go, uh, have fun. Do whatever you want to do to make your Pokemon look creative. Um, you also, by the end of today, need to make sure that you've created a pedigree chart like this here. It doesn't have to be exactly like this one. As a matter of fact, I don't want it to be exactly like this one because I don't want you to copy it. Um, but your pedigree chart has to go through three different generations. So you see here, this would be like the grandparent generation having two boys. And so I just labeled the boy dad Pokemon, showing he married the mom Pokemon, and then that they had two kids and so I pretended that this was the baby Pokemon that we created from the two parents up here. All right now with the pedigree chart you can shade, half shade, don't shade at all, um, whichever organisms you want to. Okay it's completely up to you what you're passing on um, to which organism. 
But tomorrow is your last day to just kind of tie up loose ends, finish up your project, and you'll be writing a paragraph about your pedigree chart. So if you can't tell me that, you know, this grandparent up here is shaded in, meaning he's carrying the genetic disorder, um, and that his wife has to be um, a carrier because they passed it on to their son, but then his son married a lady who was also a half shader and then they had two pokemon that were affected by the genetic disorder like you have to know what the shading means and how to go through a pedigree chart if your paragraph doesn't make any sense you're gonna lose points here all right so just make sure it goes through three generations you can shade half shade whatever um, but please make sure in your explanation you are explaining how the trait was passed down through the family and that it actually makes sense, okay? So the paragraph will be for tomorrow. Just make sure today you get your baby Pokemon drawn and then you draw out a pedigree chart of three generations. And then you should be fine and on track for our last day working on this, which will be Wednesday, okay? Um, if you've been absent, you can either work with someone else who's been absent, um, which is what I would prefer, or you can join a group if you absolutely can't find anybody who has also been absent. Um, yesterday, you guys should have gone ahead and grabbed poster board and stuff. Just make sure your names are on these so that you don't lose them and people don't accidentally take work that is not theirs. All right. So if you need me, email me. I will be on my computer all day answering any questions. All right. So good luck. Let me know how I can help.